So you want a tank in Dragonflight, but you don't know which of the six tanks to choose from. Maybe it's been a while since you've played any of these tanks and they've gone through a bunch of changes in Dragonflight. You want to see what it's like to play them. This is, video is not about what tank is currently doing the most damage or taking the least damage or most optimal in Mythic Plus or Rare. None of that. This is how do you play this tank? Specifically, how it feels to play this tank. What's it like to do this? You should play the tank that you have the most fun with, whether you're brand new to this game or you're coming back to tanking, whatever it is, which tank is the most fun? Because they're all viable across all parts of the game. I have not seen a video like this where it's talking specifically nothing about meta, nothing about all these things. It is how the tank actually plays. So what I've done is I have seven different categories that I have given each of these six tanks a rating of one to five. Things like mobility, how much area of effect spells that they have, displacement of moving enemies around, self-healing, defensive cooldowns, utility, all that. A rating of one just means it has the lowest possible of that type of thing in the game. A rating of one in mobility would mean it's the slowest class in the game, not in relation to other tanks, because if I want to play a mobile tank, I don't care how much more mobile or less mobile that tank is compared to the others. I just want a mobile tank. So a ranking of five would mean it's the most possible mobility you could have in the game as far as a tank goes, and that is the scale. A three would be a solid number. So how this is going to work? We're going to go through each tank one at a time, giving them each of the rankings so you can really think about each of the tanks. I'm also going to give you a feel of what it's like to play them. What is it like to use your abilities? I'm not going to do an analytic rotation breakdown of what moves to do in what order. It's the big picture. How does it feel to play? What kind of things do you have to do while playing this tank so you can start to chop these tanks off your list and pick your top two or your top one? Then at the end, we're going to take a big step back and look at all these tanks in a big, huge, beautiful chart that I had made for you guys that I also worked with in collaboration with Dark Mech. Dark Mech is another World of Warcraft content creator here on YouTube that has extreme knowledge of tanking. We bashed our heads together to come up with these different rankings. His numbers are a little different than mine. We kind of collaborated, talked about it back and forth to give you all the best possible numbers. So shout out to Dark Mech. He also has a tanking video that's a little bit more mechanical focused. He talks about the pros and cons of the class, actually some mechanical things of what's looking like. So after you get the big picture of which one you're wanting in this video, maybe watch both videos back to back and you will definitely be able to pick your tank. So thank you to Dark Mech for collaborating on this video. Link to his his channel will be down in the description. All right, here we go. First up is the warrior. I felt like that was an appropriate first starting class to do with this thing for this breakdown. So the first category is mobility and the warriors get a three. Warriors have a couple things they can do for movement at baseline. Is first is a heroic leap. You can literally jump into battle. You get a little speed boost afterwards. That's awesome. You can actually charge an enemy, charging in there like that. There's also a talent for a shield charge to be able to run in even better. And if you want to target an ally, you can charge to an ally and intervene to them. Next up is melee AOE. What I mean by melee AOE is I also have a second category of ranged AOE, which I'll show right after this. Melee AOE is in melee range to the tank. What is your melee AOE like? Do you have a lot? Can you keep spamming it out there? Most tanks have a solid AOE. In fact, the lowest score is a four. So this, this category is either going to be a four or a five in this, as far as this goes. Basically, it looks like this. Thunderclap is a melee AOE around you. Then you have revenge spams that you can use your rage and spin your rage to hit enemies around you with your rage cooldowns. And then thunderclap again. Lots of stuff going around you. You also have things like challenging shout to be able to taunt all enemies around you to attack you. And even your talents have things like shockwave and thunderous roar to be able to really hit out a bunch of damage around you. But what if you need to hit things that are not in melee range? What if you're over here and you are tanking a bunch of packs right here and there's some enemies over there and some a, a group of enemies comes in, you gotta go grab them. Warriors, uh, I'm gonna give their ranged AoE a two out of five. It's not the best. There's lots of classes that have better at this. Uh, this is what I'm talking about. Spear of Bastion is a talent that they have. You can throw the spear over there and that's gonna get you. But then that's kind of a problem because now they're tethered and the Spear of Bastion ties them to that location. Super cool ability, but trying to grab things and pull them into you, not eh, not the best there. And really their best ranged AOE is their heroic leap to jump in there and then damage them. But then that problem is maybe I wanted to stand over here and I didn't want to move over there. They also have a talented Ravager, which you have a ranged AOE over there and you have a heroic throw that can bounce even further. But in general, just not the best. And speaking of not the best, the fourth category is displacement, being able to move enemies from one spot to another. The best example of this is the Death Knight. Spoiler alert, they got a five, okay? But Warrior, only have one single displacement, which is Spear of Bastion. It's on cooldown right now, but it tethers enemies to a single location, which is technically displacement. It keeps pulling them to the center in that one location, but it, that's not as versatile. 
and it's a talent. So moving on to the fifth category is utility. How much utility does having a warrior in the group compared to other tanks that you possibly could have? What do they bring to the table? I have a list right here. Warriors specifically bring Battle Shout as a group buff that gives to the group. That's very nice. Intervene is being able to kind of help and, uh, allies take less damage. Rallying Cry gives everyone around you a boost of health. You do have AoE stuns, single target stuns, a shield charge stun, and an AoE fear. Some decent utility, but not as good as some of the other tanks in this list. Next up now we have Cell healing this is huge for you being able to keep your own health bar up if your health bar goes down how good are you at getting it back up if the healer's busy the healer's occupied whatever else is going on how well can you take care of yourself and how reliant are you on heals Self-healing for the warrior used to be down at a one, but now we're at a three. So what do they got? They have an impending victory, which is talented, but it's really high up in the tree. And you can heal yourself immediately for 30% of your maximum health. That's pretty good. And you can spend rage on ignore pain, which gives you an absorb that you can actually build up and you actually have it be a nice little buffer, which I would see absorb shields as basically healing. They also have a lot of healing baked in that are talent points that they just have passive healing from dealing damage and stuff. And now for the final category and warriors are shining the brightest here in this one are defense defensive cooldowns. These are how many options do you have of defensive tools at your disposal? You're about to take some damage. You're currently taking some damage. You just took a bunch of it. What kind of cooldowns can you use to best manage the battlefield and how much damage that you're taking? And a warrior in this category is a five out of five. This is a top tier uh, amount of cooldowns you have. You have that rallying cry, a last stand, both of which boost your health pool to be a little bit bigger. Shield wall is one of the best tanking cooldowns in the game. Uh, demoralizing shout to reduce the damage you take from enemies. A spell reflect for spells shield block all of those things are not taken into consideration also these defensives are separate from the self-healing i'm not considering those i am separating those into two it, uh, the best case defensive tank would be a five in both which no tank has death knights got close but anyway Warriors have a ton of options as far as tanking goes and different stuff you can do to manage your damage. So now the big picture of Warrior, what does it look like on the screen now is going to be all the rankings that you got here to kind of be able to take a big picture in of what this warrior is like as I'm explaining this. Warriors use Rage. Did you see this Rage pool building up here? You build up Rage and then you spend it on lots of different things. That's your Rage pool. You take get taken damage, you use things, it builds up your Rage and you spend it. That's their spender. And what it feels like to play is you charging in all over the place you got an ally over here you're charging to you got an enemy over here you're charging into you're leaping around really awesome it feels really like a warrior your builders in this case are things that you build up rage with is shield slam and thunderclap you can see right here i have a shield slam up there's a shield slam and you are basically managing that and shield slam can have a proc where it resets its cooldown immediately just like that and then you have thunderclaps and shield slam and your main thing right here is thunderclap and shield slam you're also going to be keeping your shield block up at all times and getting shield block up to see this little shield that's on me now it's blocking the next damage is coming in shield block costs rage as you see i'm using rage for this another thing that costs rage is this absorb shield of ignore pain you can put an absorb on yourself that really gives another layer of defense on yourself and you can spend your rage on all these defensive things or if you want to go a little offensive, I really do love the choice that Warriors have in this way. Building Rage back up, you can choose to spend your Rage on an AoE Revenge, which is a swing around yourself for AoE damage. Or you can get, if the enemy gets low, target dummies can't get low. So you can also have Execute, which comes online at 20%, and you can dump your Rage into dealing heavy single target damage. So the playstyle is honestly really fun. You have procs of the Shield Slam that you're hitting in there, AoE damage going out. You can choose what to do with your Rage in four dynamic ways of Shield Block and Ignore Pain for defense or revenge aoe spam and execute for offense and lastly for the warrior every tank has an active mitigation that you use this is not like shield wall pressing shield walls a three and a half minute cooldown for 40 percent damage reduction that is not active mitigation active mitigation is this shield that i put on my shield block my ignore pain all those things so what it feels like for that is you have the rage like i just said to spend and you can choose to keep up shield block which is usually your priority number one you're spending rage on shield block and if you take extra damage you spend ignore pain those are your active mitigations both feel dynamic or if you want to trade it in for damage you can there's the warrior Warrior, moving on. Next up on the list is a druid, which I can shapeshift in an instant button and fly around. That's just worth mentioning. You have an instant fly button. That is just, it's just pretty great. Has nothing to do with tanking, but okay, let's go back to bear form now. Here we go. 
I'm going to go through the rankings a bit quicker now because you understand what the overall concept of each of these categories are and then give the big picture of what it's like to play a druid. Druid's mobility. You would think that because they can fly around like this, they'd have higher mobility, but no, uh, they you can't be in travel form while tanking, so it eliminates things. You also can't be in cat form while tanking. That would not be a good idea. So sticking in bear form, you don't have as much mobility. They have a three for mobility. They also have a charge just like warriors do, which is great. That's awesome. Cool. Their other only other mobility they have is a stampeding roar, which is a group dash which affects your entire group it's really nice it's on a very very short one minute cooldown and you can give it to the rest of your group so honestly that part of it is part of the utility which druids are really shining in uh but it is as far as your own mobility you just you feel like a little tubby bear that just can't really get around all that much in comparison to some of the other classes again a three is not bad because you also have a cat dash that she's going to be in between pulls if you're fighting this and you're in bear form and you're in fighting in bear form and then you want a cat dash over here okay cool but you better shift back into bear form before things get real and then you can dash on in there for melee aoe they're about the same as a warrior they get a four like i said most tanks aren't going to be anything lower than a four here swipe is a constant spam you have an infinite you have no cooldown on this swipe it is one of the only tanks that has a infinite just swipe 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 aoe 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 all around you and then you have a thrash which is a bigger harder hitting with a bleed on it lots of aoe going out around you and then you have a tanking cooldown that lets you spam your even better aoe cooldown all the way around yourself and you just become a whirling blade of claws but now on a very sad note and this is actually the only zero on this entire list is ranged aoe bears get a zero for ranged AoE. If I am standing here and I want to have fight something over there, my best shot is just spamming Moonfire on each one of them. Yes, it's a ranged thing, and that's my best bet to be able to grab those things and bring them over here. Taunt, uh, sure, I can do those things, but they, there is no, no sort of ranged AoE, which from, in my case, in, in the, my personally as a tank, I like having ranged AoE you know, for lots of reasons, but uh, the bears have none. And then for displacements, they do get a little bit. They have Typhoon, which is a big pushback thing, and Ursal's Vortex text which is similar to bastion or whatever yeah a little swirling whirlwind both of those though are talented and you have zero displacement if you don't talent it so i might even put druids out of one here but they do have two different options and typhoon is pretty good to be able to shove them back for utility now though druids get a four like i just said you have a group sprint buff that's constantly happening and in, in, in mythic plus if you're trying to run things very fast that's very very useful and another thing that druids get as a tank which is nice is a combat res you get <laughs> rebirth as a druid and you are able to combat res while in bear form all that kind of stuff and you have mark of the wild which you could also cast in bear form i didn't know that until recently but uh, another great buff to give your group they also have the ability to remove curse while in bear form. I did not know this. You could remove curse while in bear form and you can soothe while in bear form. This is also something worth noting, kind of like the really cool travel form, which I guess isn't going to come into play in dungeons. But you can also stealth. You're the only tank that can stealth as far as in cat form. You could stealth up to my boom, I'm a bear. And there you go. On a side note, they also do have hibernate, cyclone, innervate, and nature's vigil as far as talents go. Very useful. Moving on to self regen. So self healing, uh, they have two options here. You have a rage spell spending frenzied region it only costs 10 rage so when it, <laughs> i just turned it into travel form no 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 you have a rage spending or frenzied region right here which is a nice very cheap you have two charges of it a 32 percent health over three seconds it is a really great passive 11,000 tickling hill onto myself and you have a talented option of renewal which is a very big 30 percent instant heal so they don't have a ton of options but it's very frenzied region is just very nice constant healing that you can easily spend rage on low cooldown constantly getting a little bit of heal then for defensive cooldowns i'm going to give the druids a three so their self healing gets a three and their defensives also get a three they have bark skin which is a nice little percent damage reduction and survival instincts another percent damage reduction which you could talent to have two charges of for some great percent damage reduction and then of course you have your active mitigation of iron fur which is a very simple kind of like shield block like we just said with warriors they spin their rage and then they get an iron fur and you get little stacks and you get a very nice percent boost you get a very nice chunk of armor boost every time you use iron fur and it stacks so you can really be using it a lot Druids also have Heart of the Wild for a little bit of a tanking cooldown, kind of. You deal more damage, you get more healing and stuff. Uh, Incarnation, which is an amazing cooldown to be able to do. Uh, and you can just literally spam uh, your main Thrash cooldown, which is what I, I will get, get to here in a second. But it, is, it feels great to be able to run in there and just spam Thrash like a madman. 
And talents like Rage of the Sleeper also helps with that self-healing as well, which kind of fits into both categories there. So overall, a double threes for self-healing and defensives. So what does it feel like to play a druid? Whenever you're playing a druid, you're going to be shifting. Well, see, you don't really shift all the time. You could. There are some talents that gives you mobility after you shift into cat and everything. So that is a possibility if you want to be careful with that, but don't get hit while in cat form. Uh, but you're going to be basically, uh, get Thrash is going to be your main uh, AoE swiping situation around you. Uh, lots of, it uh, puts a dot on your target. Target, so you're going to be using that off cooldown. Mangle is a proc that you're going to single target, hit a mangle, and then you have your, your moon fires that you're going to be hitting out. And that's really going to be the main thing that you're doing. You have a dot that you do have to keep up on the target, which in general, I hate having to keep dots up on targets. So that that's for me personally, I don't like that as much. But in general, it, it, you are going to get procs as part of your rotation that's going to kind of keep it up to where you don't have to really pay attention to it too much unless you really have multiple targets here that you really want to kind of keep it all up on while you're doing it. Managing mangle procs, managing your moonfire procs, getting thrash off cooldown, and then spamming swipe in between, which swipe is your AoE, just constant spam AoE. Now for spending rage, this does not feel as good to me as the warriors, because you have three options. You have iron fur, which is going to give you that percent armor, big chunks of armor on yourself. You have the frenzied regen, which gives you that trickle healing, which those are both very great defensive cooldowns. But the offensive side of things is maul, and maul is a single target attack on a target. And I'm trying not to be too opinionated here, but it's just a single target damage attack on one target, and it's just, uh, I wish they had some another AoE rage spender. But we get Maul. So in general, you're going to probably be spending Rage on your defensive cooldowns, which just means you're going to be pulling more, pull more AoE stuff and spend that Rage on your Iron Furs and your self-healing and just pull more and you'll do more damage because you're constantly spitting out AoEs. Druids do have great constant AoE around themselves, so I can't complain too much about the whole Maul thing. So there's Druids. Now let's move on to the next one. Also something real quick I wanted to point out here, uh, WoW at Night is another really great content creator here on YouTube with as far as tanks go. He has lots of content on tanks, check him out as well. Uh, he made a great point that I totally agree with and I've organized this video in this way. In the big picture of this game, you have offensive tanks and defensive tanks, which in general offensive tanks are more offensively oriented. You can do things more offensively and trade defense for offense, whereas defensive tanks are really more prioritizing that. I think that's a great mind thought as far as the separation of tanks. And you also have simple, moderate, or complex tanks. How hard are they to play? I purposely started this video with the two most simple tanks. Warrior would be a simple defensive tank and Druids would be a simple offensive tank. And then as we go through the list here, Paladins are going to be a moderate, so we're upping the difficulty by one, but they are defensive. Whereas Demon Hunters are still moderate, but offensive. And then for the complex tanks, so you have two simple, two medium, and two complex, as far as the, the skill difficulty of how hard it is to play and how much is going on. And then you have offense, defense, offense, defense, offense, defense for both. So Demon Hunters would be that moderate, medium difficulty level of an offensive tank. And then we have complex defensive for, de for Death Knights and complex offensive for Monks. So the big picture, we have two simple tanks with Warrior and Druid, Warrior being defensive, Druid being offensive. We have two medium level tanks between Paladin and Demon Hunter, Paladin being defensive, Demon Hunter being offensive. And then two complex tanks with Death Knight and Monk, Death Knight being defensive, Monk being offensive. I thought that was a cool differentiation between everything, so here we go. Here we go, so for mobility for Paladins, they get a big fat one. They get a one, it's the lowest of all the tanks, yes, including Death Knight. They have the worst mobility possibly in the game. Uh, the only thing they have is Divine Steed, which is this, it's you summon your mount for half a second, and then you, and then that's it. I have talented this thing to have more duration, to have more charges, and that is all that they get, and uh, it's not the best. Their melee AoE is a four. They have a lot of stuff going on. In fact, most of their abilities are AoE. Consecration's an AoE. They have a blessed hammer that swirls around them. Even their active mitigation is an AoE in the area around them. And they have some talents that are also AoE based. They have some sort of blast of energy around you. And then now for ranged AoE. Ranged AoE, they also get a four. It is worth noting that in general, one of their main rotation abilities of judgment is range. as has a 30 foot range for their normal, <laughs> one of their normal attacks, which is honestly pretty nice in, in that regard. But your shield, your Avenger's shield is just bounces all over the place. It is really a great range. A bunch of groups come over, Avenger's shield. And it's on a decently short cooldown. And you have a talented Divine Toll, which does it again. And look at all this. And they're over there too. Oh my God, so much AoE. And Avenger's shield's back up so I can throw it out there again. Great. But what's not great is their displacement. Their displacement is also a zero. There's actually a two zeros on this list. I missed this one. Uh, they have nothing to displace any enemies whatsoever. But we follow that zero with a five for utility. Their utility is a five. They also now have a combat res. 
that that was a great uh, already the most useful uh, class as far as utility goes and they also now have a battle res they have an aura that affects the rest of their group they have blessing of freedom that they can use to be able to free people if they're slowed down or rooted in some way blessing of freedom takes them out of that blessing of sacrifice reduces damage that somebody else takes blessing of protection protects them from <laughs> physical attacks they have a single target stun repentance as a ct and they can cleanse toxins and diseases uh, that's a lot it's a lot Self-healing now goes back down a little bit of a roller coaster here. Self-healing, I would give them a two. The only real thing they have is Word of Glory. Word of Glory is a holy power spender. We're going to get into holy power here in a second, but they only have a, a, which I guess we'll have to get into right now. H how Paladins work is they have holy power that you build up right here. You build up up to five holy power, and whenever you have three, you can choose to either use it on Shield of the Righteous, which A, we smash in front of you, blast the little holy magic and shield slam in front of your target, or you can Word of Glory. And in in that case, uh, your active mitigation is Shield of the Righteous. You, The thing that you use on yourself to keep yourself alive is Shield of the Righteous. So it'd feel really bad to heal yourself. You're taking a bunch of damage and you heal yourself, but now you can't use Shield of the Righteous because it's the same cooldown. So you have to choose between healing yourself or taking less damage, which that part just in general feels bad. But they do have uh, it set up to where there's talents that you're going to be picking where every third Shield Slam, so I do every third one of these, I get a free Word of Glory, which that in general is is fine so there we go the third one pops up now i have a, a word of glory i can just freely heal myself just for free and that's really their self-healing is a proc based on a third cast of an ability which in general compared to something like death strike where you just in general have the runic power you spend it and you heal yourself you have to wait for a proc or sacrifice a defensive cooldown to heal yourself which that part just feels bad i originally said a one but dark Bake wanted it to be a two so i was like ah, okay but it still just feels bad but to end on a high note is another five for the paladin is their defensives they have so many defensive cooldowns it was honestly overwhelming when i first got back into playing Paladin of how many they truly had. Ardent Defender is a damage reduction. Guardian of the Ancient Kings, another damage reduction. Lay on Hands is a full health heal for 100% of your health. That's crazy. It's a seven minute cooldown, but still really good and signature, and you can use it on other people. Shield of the Righteous, we already talked about, which is your active mitigation. Blessing and Protection, which you can use on yourself as well. Divine Shield, which is immunity. <laughs> These, this Paladin's pretty crazy. Uh, and Eye of Tear, which is another uh, damage reduction on your enemies. So the, the, the defensives that paladins have are honestly crazy, which is why I would slant them more towards a defensive style of tank, but overall, pretty cool. So how does it feel to play a paladin? We already talked about it. They do have mana, and if you if you purposely like cast healing spells or something, your mana does go down. As you see, like the healing just absolutely demolishes your mana, but you don't even have to worry about mana whatsoever unless you're casting hard heals on yourself, which you shouldn't be. Uh, so really, everything is about holy power. All of your abilities, you're just trying to use your abilities and just keep them all off cooldown. Get your holy power, build up your holy power, and then spend it on Shield of the Righteous so you can keep up that active mitigation. And that's really the whole play style. Also, Consecration, you want to be standing inside of your consecration if you leave your consecration lots of different things uh, you, you lose out on so you want to stand in your consecration use all of your holy power builders off cooldown so that you can spend that holy power on that shield of the righteous so that then you can proc the word of glory heal on yourself for even better stuff you truly do feel like a holy Captain America throwing out your shield at bouncing around and coming back to you. You're the leader on a battlefield, so there's a lot of cool stuff going on with Paladins, and but the overall, the, the mobility, I'll save my opinions for the end. Moving on. Demon Hunters now, uh, full disclosure, this is what I'm going to be maining in Dragonflight, so I'm going to try not to be too uh, biased here, but uh, here we go. So starting us off with the mobility, they get a 5 out of 5. Monks came close with a, you'll see in a second, but they are the only ones with a 5. They have a jump, 2 leaps, both with damage on impact on a 2 charge cooldown that you can reduce down with talents to be stupid low, and it has 2 charges, absolutely crazy. And you have uh, the ability to, uh, uh, for, and you can jump and glide, you have a double jump and a glide on top of that mobility uh just which is faster in general and i can fell blades which is a talent you can dash in there you have another talent venge, uh, vengeful retreat to do a backflip out of there and another talent called the hunt to dash back in and put a huge damage and a dot on your target and in general you have movement speed that you gain whenever you you run and different things you do that you have higher movement speed as well and master increases it too with talents and stuff but now next up is melee aoe which is another five out of five you have a lot of aoe going on around 
around yourself. First of all, you have an aura of immolation aura that is a constant burning aura around yourself. Better than a, a consecration because you move and it stays with you. All of your spender abilities, so in, in general, uh, demon hunters use pain. It's basically the same thing as rage. I don't know why they don't get rage, but it's basically the same thing where you use certain abilities and it builds up this rage, which you only really get pain from using abilities. You don't get them from auto attacks in that way. So that's a little bit of the difference there. But once you have all of this pain built up, you have two ways to spend it. Soul Cleave, which is a cleave in front of you, an AOE around you, or Spirit Bomb, which is another AOE around you that's even better that you build up souls for. We'll get to how the playstyle works in a second, but all of your spenders are just AOE nukes around you. And you have another spender of a breath attack that turns you into a demon for a second and breathes fire in front and does a ton of damage. And you have a Vengeful Retreat. This ability also deals damage at the target location, and you have an AOE stun that deals damage and stuns targets around you. So tons of AOE, and if you thought we were done on AOE, we're not. They also have a 5 out of 5 for ranged AOE. Again, I'm not being balanced uh, in, er, impartial here I, I that's i checked it by dark mech he's i i, I promise you this is not too, too slanted they have the best ranged aoe they have sigils sigil uh, i can put down on the ground and it explodes at the target location also dealing uh ticking dot damage over time throw grave is also similar to paladin where it bounces against additional targets paladin's avenger shield is better but throw glaive does bounce and it is kind of nice sometimes infernal strike just like warrior's heroic leap also deals damage to the target location but you get two charges of it so in in sometimes if I'm over here and I wanted to I could leap over there smash on him hit him for a second and leap back and talented you have Elysian Decree or uh, Fodder to the Flame both of which huge AoEs but now to get into displacement here is they get a one on displacement the only thing they have is Sigil of Change which is actually really hard to get to and in general you don't get so really for all intents and purposes they might be a zero here if you don't pick up sigil of change but you could if you wanted to in mythic plus or whatever then for utility they're really not the best here they're actually the worst the lowest utility for a tank is a three they have imprison which is nice if you want to be able to stop and imprison something just to keep it out of combat if you're trying to skirt around some things in mythic plus uh sigil of silence though sigil of silence is absolutely insane you if talented it's an eight second silence which you could upgrade to a 10 second silence which is absolutely crazy amount of silence that you can get there uh, and they have an AOE AOE stun that we already talked about with the Chaos Nova now that's brand new to them and consume is a buff taker so not the most useful but they have a decent little stuff in their toolkit so not too bad next up is self healing at a four a lot of things we already talked about they get healing from but one thing that I have not mentioned yet is souls is a lot of these things are here whenever I'm attacking you're gonna see this here this is shows how many souls that I have uh, up around me I have four souls lots of stuff that I use with certain abilities increase the amount of souls you see these little purple things run around if I run over those I can pick them up and get healed by them very similar to monks which we'll talk about them in a second um, but the cool part of that is a lot of my abilities consume those souls to deal extra damage and do other cool stuff and I get healing from that so not only do you get healing from the souls you consume they get sucked into yourself but you get healing from the damage you deal with those abilities and you have talents and other things that let you be able to heal for fire damage you deal and demon hunters deal a lot of fire damage that breath ability that you get also heals you partially for the damage you deal there too and almost all of your defensive cooldowns of metamorphosis whenever you shift into your demon form you get a leech to be able to increase the healing there as well uh, whenever you have soul cleave you have your uh, talented ability that gives you a heal over time a lot of things you do have healing baked into them not a five out of five but at least you got that four right there next to the top of the king of the hill uh, but then the last thing we got here is defensives which they are the worst at now is a two they the lowest defensives uh, other than that there's threes and fours and fives but they have a two in defense their true tanking cooldown is Fiery Brand, which is okay. It's a dot over time that reduces damage by 40%. And other than that, we have Metamorphosis, which is lots of different ways to enter in Metamorphosis. And there's you gain health, you gain armor, lots of stuff whenever you're in Metamorphosis, which is nice. Uh, and you can enter in Metamorphosis when you do your Fell Devastation Breath. It, gives you temporarily metamorphosis if you talent it and you get little trickle heals from also the hunt too whenever you have those things so but that's technically self-healing so we won't count that so moving on to the next one next up is the death knight for this for mobility they actually get a two death's advance now pretty much has two charges whenever you talent it but the path that you take you're probably going to take it it's a decently long it stays on you for a decent amount of time and that's just one charge and i can use the next charge to keep moving and there's talents to where the first part of the death advance moves even faster so honestly on a death knight i 
I feel way more mobile than I feel like I should, especially with all the death grip stuff they can do, which we'll get to. They also have Wraith Walk, which lets you another movement speed thing, very similar to Death's Advance, but you can't be stopped as well. That's another nice thing is that if there's things slowing around you, you can use these abilities to even surpass that. Melee AoE is nothing special. They get a four. They have a passive blood boil heal around themselves. They erupt disease and put a dot of AoE around them. And your main attack ability, your main spender has a cleave on three targets, which also helps there. You also have lots of things like uh, Abomination's Limb is an AoE around you to kind of deal damage. Bone Storm AoE around you deals damage. Decent AoE. Ranged AoE is now a little bit of a different story. They only get a two here. Now, you would think with Death and Decay, and I originally ranked this higher, but Dark Mech is, he mains Death Knight, so I, I definitely agreed with this point he made. But if I'm over here and I'm tanking this, I'm tanking over here, I'm tanking all these things right here. Uh, and this pack's over here and I want to grab them uh, or just pull another group. If I Death and Decay, I've now lost my Death and Decay. And a huge thing for Death Knights now is standing in your death and decay so using a death and decay off to the side and just losing it like that is really bad for death knights because you want to stand in it so if you're not going to use it and then run into it then you might not should do that now of course they do have ranged abilities just like all other classes do you can death grip them in so you're probably not going to feel like their ranged aoe is only a two because you can death grip them to you and then that solves the problem you also have gorfine's grass lots of other things we'll get to in displacement here in a second it's not going to feel as much from that but it is kind of if you all you have to do is death and decay but moving on to displacement they're the only ones that got a five nobody else even got a four they are a five and that's the main reason why i even put this on this list to be able to compare to show that death knights true they're a different breed when it comes to death, death grip to be able to pull and death grip now is basically two charges that's crazy gorfine's grass pulling things in that's a talent abomination's limb pulling things in another talent but so much pulling then for utility, things are still looking pretty good. They get a four on utility where they have a combat res. Another combat res that a tank gets. That's pretty nice. All the stuff I just said about the grips and pulling things in, that kind of also counts for utility in some ways. It is pretty useful in certain boss mechanics and it's almost mandatory in some raid encounters to pull enemies to certain locations. Even just grouping them all into one spot easily to be able to have your DPS burn them down quick is a huge utility boost. On top of that, Death Knights also have a lot of anti-CC with the anti-magic shell, anti-stuns here, anti-fears and charms. Lots of different things that they can do to break those things. And on top of that, they have an anti-magic zone, which is nice if you get the talent, which maybe you would get in certain raid encounters, possibly. Uh, a single target stun and a CC with blinding sleet, another talent. And now self-healing. My goodness, self-healing, five out of five. They're the only ones with a five on this one, too. So they are known for their self-healing. They have lots of different things to self-heal. The main one is Death Strike. And we'll talk about Death Strike when, it, when we get to the Death Knight overview. But Death Strike is a runic power spender that lets you heal yourself every time you hit with it. Based on the damage you just took. So if you just took a big hit, your death strike heals even more. You have a blood plague disease that's on the target giving you trickle healing onto yourself. You have a cooldown for healing that increases the amount of healing you receive from others. It's on a pretty short cooldown. You have talents like blood drinker consume and you can sacrifice your ghoul to heal too. And speaking of defensives, this is the complicated defensive tank. Their defensive gets a four out of five as well. So in the big picture, this tank has a five for self-healing and a four for defensives, totaling a nine technically, and has the highest defensive score out of all the tanks. A lot of the stuff I just said about anti-magic shell, icebound fortitude, different defensive cooldowns they have, dancing rune weapon, there's just something I haven't even mentioned yet, and bone shield. Part of how you play a death knight is getting bone shields on yourself, which reduce the damage you take from the next hits and stuff, but then you also have dancing rune weapon, which, oh my gosh, you gain 40% parry chance while it's up, and it's up a decent amount of time. Back in Shadowlands, it was up constantly, which was crazy. Dancing rune weapon basically doubles everything that you deal, so whenever you deal one attack, it also mimics the same attack you do, which is very great quality of life for all the different stuff that you play with, which we'll get to in a second, and it's a great offensive and defensive cooldown. So now the big picture of death knight, what does it feel like? First of all, this is the first comp class I'm going over and as you see here I have runes basically certain abilities cost runes to use and certain abilities cost runic power to use so you have two different things which adds to a little bit of the complexity which honestly doesn't feel too crazy complex uh, but that's probably because I played a death knight for years because whenever I started writing out what the death knight does I was like man this is kind of complicated but I'm not trying to do a full-blown guide on this, but how you play a Death Knight is you see this bouncing zero in front of me. That's a weak aura that I have of not be having bone shields on me because Death Knights need bone shield on you. This is your active mitigation. You need to have this stack on you. It does increase your haste while you have it on you, and it can stack up to 10 times. It costs two of these runes that we just talked about down here. It costs two runes to use, and you're using it to be able to stack this 10. Every time you get hit, it does take one down. So this is one thing that you're juggling as a Death Knight to keep up this 10 stacks or keep up at 
least five stacks of bone shield on yourself. So it's one thing you're going to be keeping track of as these runes are coming off. And you're going to spend your runes, and as you spend runes, you get runic power, and then you can spend your runic power. So as I spend a rune, I get runic power. I spend a rune, I get runic power. I spend a rune, I get runic power. And then you can spend that runic power on death strikes, which is the big, huge thing that's going to heal you for a percent of the... It's going to heal you for the part of the damage you deal with it, and it's also going to heal you for part of the damage you just received. So if you can strategically, which here comes the skill in here, if you take a big hit and you immediately death strike, you're going to have a much beefier heal for that death strike. But some of the nice stuff is every time you use this ability called Morrow Rend, you get three of these bone st stack charges. But if I use Dancing Rune Weapon, everything gets doubled. And as when I use Dancing Rune Weapon, I get more stacks of it here. Is when I press it now, it doubles the amount of what I'm doing. So instead of three, it gives me six. And there's even things you can go to even go further than that. But the big picture of playing a Death Knight, as you can see, it is a little complicated, uh, is I'm going to be Morrow Rending to keep my uh, bone shields up. If that's not a playstyle you want to be able to keep track of a buff that's on your it's almost like keeping track of a dot now that I think about it that an enemy is attacking it off of you and you have to keep using this ability to keep it up on yourself that's like a game you're playing the whole time while you're doing this uh, you're also spending runes to build up your runic power to be able to death strike and the important part there is you always want to have a death strike see here, right now I don't have the ability I have to have at least 35 there we go now I can death strike you almost want to be sitting on enough runic power to death strike but then you don't want to cap yourself so you want to dance between enough to be able to death strike if you need to based on taking a big hit that you didn't see coming and you don't want to cap your runic power so that's another game you're playing with yourself and you also have blood boil which is that aoe that hits all around you to keep the disease on all your targets and you want to be standing inside of your death and decay so yeah i mean this is kind of complicated compared to the, the warrior so keeping up a shield on yourself to make sure that you have this bone shield on yourself casting a ability off cooldown to keep all of your dots up on the target spending your runes so you can gain runic power to then spend the runic power on heals to heal yourself while standing in death and decay man that does sound like a lot but man oh man will you be rewarded for that as you are gripping things from all around the map to yourself spreading your diseases death and decays all over the place great defensives great utility big picture solid moves for the death knight and they're a little more mobile now too last up is the monk now so i'm going to do this monk and go through the whole breakdown then we're going to do the big picture of all the tanks at once to try and truly help you find that final big picture for which tank you want to play for mobility they get a four they have a lot of great mobility they I, at one point they were out of five, but then when I got on the Demon Hunter, they just have so much movement. It's stupid how much movement they have. I love it. Uh, so I really just had to give them a four just out of respect for the Demon Hunter and their craziness. But they do have uh, another tool, just like the D Demon Hunter. They have two charges of their move in this way, this little this torpedo dash. They have a strange ability that you really have to think outside the box to use correctly, but I, I love that about it. You can put an anchor down over here and then you can pr and then switch places with it. I absolutely love that. And there's so many really cool things you can do with this te teleport it's like a d d warlock's demon circle where you put an anchor and you can teleport back to it lots of really cool stuff you can do there and they also have this weird it's almost like a death grip meets warrior charge where you can charge to a target but it they meet you halfway so if there's they're here and you're here and then you use it's called clash you meet in the middle kind of cool and now going to aoe they have a five out of five on aoe them and demon hunters that melee aoe around themselves if anything maybe the monks should get a six because they are just absolutely crazy just to quickly list off they have a spammable i guess that was a lie earlier they do have a spammable like the druids do they have a spammable aoe it does cost energy to use so maybe it's not truly spammable but it basically is they have a breath of fire that goes out in front of them they have a totem that they can put down on the ground that deals aoe damage another one that deals aoe damage and a, a easy talent that's almost like the spinning jade kick uh the, for more aoe and now for ranged aoe they do have a lot and I, I gave them a three on this i almost gave them a four but then the power Paladins and all of the throwing the shields and stuff. I really... I'd give them three and a half maybe for, for this uh, uh, monk here. They have Keg Smash, which is a great ability. You have two charges of it if you talent it. It's a th ranged throw. So if I'm over here and some mobs come in here, I can easily just lob over a keg that way, throw it over. It's not the best. That's that's the range of it right here. 15 yard range right there. So it's not the farthest. So again, that's not the best. But then they have my favorite cooldown in the game. My favorite cool, it's it's exploding keg. It's absolutely crazy. Huge amount of explosive fire damage. It hits so hard <laughs> It's, it's really fun to use. Uh, it's just a huge AoE nuke. You also have a Chi Wave ability that you can send out. It damages and heals and bounces all over the place. So overall, pretty decent. Now moving on to Displacement, which is also 
pretty decent. They have uh, Clash, which is the thing I just said about the, the, the dash where it meets you halfway, which kind of pulls them a little bit. They also have a really unique thing. It's in their talents, but whenever they taunt, whenever a monk taunts with, it's called Hasty Provocation. When they taunt, the enemy runs to you very quickly, almost like a death grip, but a little slower. And then there's Ring of Peace, which is it does not let enemies enter into it. That is great on certain affixes and Mythic Plus. Absolutely great in clutch moves. Very unique displacement, absolutely good. Um, utility is a four for monks. They actually have some solid utility. Uh, Tiger's Lust is a movement, kind of like Blessing of Freedom. It's a movement speed boost, and they can use it on allies. AoE Stun Kickdown for an entire group. You have Paralysis, which is similar to AoE Knockdown Stun around yourself. Paralysis is a CC on a target. Transcendence, that little uh, teleport thing blip around. That can be used in utility situations as well. Uh, Ring of Peace, also another utility, and they also have Detox like a cleanse type of situation. So pretty useful, not ultimately useful. I think that's maybe, maybe it could be like a 3.7 for that, but overall, good utility. Uh, self-healing though is a two. I'd put them down with the Paladins as far as self-healing goes. It just, they have three different things. They have a Celestial Brew that gives you an Absorb Shield that you can also boost in other ways. Uh, they have two charges of a Healing Elixir cooldown that is a straight up 15% heal. And then they have Expel Harm, which in the same way like Demon Hunters, whenever monks attack, they have things that have these little healing orbs that pop up around. And these little healing orbs pop out and you can go grab them or whatever or you can press expel harm and it brings them to you similar to a demon hunter in that way so there's a little bit of healing there but overall in practice it just doesn't feel like that much healing so i originally did put this at a three for healing because they have a lot of options for healing so maybe with some tuning but who knows what's going to happen over the span of dragonflight maybe right now as you're watching this video the healing's not too bad so they do have healing options for defensives, I would give them also a three. They have a little bit more than Demon Hunter, but not much. They have simple cooldowns like Dampen Harm, which is a straight up damage reduction. And then Fortifying Brew is actually really good. It has Dodge Chance, Armor Chance, increase your maximum health. It's a very well-rounded tanking cooldown. Invoke Nazao also increases uh, your Stagger, which we haven't even talked about Stagger because I'm going to save it for right now. Monks have Stagger. It is one of, if not the best tanking thing in the game. Whenever you take damage, you don't actually take exactly that damage right away. If you were going to get hit for 10,000, you wouldn't really get hit for 10,000. You get hit for uh, the, the math. We're going to try and get into the numbers on it. You get hit for less than that. Let's say you just get hit for... Yeah, it basically says you delay a portion of physical damage based on your agility instead of... T and it spreads it out over 10 seconds, right? So... So basically the damage you take, you don't immediately take, you take some of it, maybe the bulk of it, but then you have a dot over time on yourself for the damage spread out over 10 seconds, making it a lot easier on healers. So you're less spiky and you can't just get one shot out of nowhere because if, even if you took a hit that would have one shot you, it won't one shot you, but then it puts a dot on you that eventually would one shot you. So it gives a little ticking timer on yourself, which also plays into their active mitigation that I purposely saved till right now. They have something called Purifying Brew. I can't demonstrate this here on the target dummies, but you have this little Purifying Brew that you can drink and it clears 50% of that delayed damage with your stagger. So if you take a whole bunch of damage and you have this huge dot on yourself from all the damage that you would have taken that's being spread out over 10 seconds, you drink this purifying brew and it cuts that in half. So if you're not taking too much damage, don't worry about it, but if you take some spike damage in your stagger, which also changes, you have a debuff on yourself, it's green if it's a little bit of stagger, yellow if it's a lot of stagger, and red if you have like a really big stagger on you. Because if you think about it, you get hit a lot, that damage over time could get to be huge, and that's when you start drinking your purifying brews and you reduce that, kind of healing yourself. No, it basically is healing yourself. You know what? I'm going to give the monk self-healing. I'm going to give it back up to a three based on purifying brew because basically you're cleansing off a dot on yourself that it would have dealt damage to you, which is basically healing. But that in itself, as I just explained, is a little bit more complicated compared to a class that just takes damage or takes less damage. You actually are taking damage, spreading it out over time and having to actively pay attention to and drink a certain cooldown that has two charges to be able to reduce that stagger down. Because if you don't manage your stagger well, and if you don't do all those types of things and other things as your rotation, you will get so much stagger on you if you don't cleanse it off that it will become unhealable and you'll just die. So playing a monk, what does it feel like? feels like whack-a-mole. It feels absolutely, you feel like crazy. It's the only class that I play this. They have the most abilities in their active cooldown rotation list. They have uh, keg smash that you're going to be smashing on your enemies. And then once you keg smash, you want to breathe fire on that, which ignites the alcohol of the keg smash that exploded on the people. So now there's a fire dot on them. You have two different kicks. 
Why are there two kicks? I don't know. Why Why do they have two kicks? But part of the monk also is something called shuffle, which is using different abilities and not using the same ability over and over, which is part of their play style, which gives them even more tanky survivableness. So again, I'm using all the abilities. I'm going down the list. I have my kick. I have another kick. I have an AoE spin around myself. I have the bouncing thing I go around myself. I have the spinning crane kick I can use. Oh, but now this is back off a of cooldown. And now this is uh, no, the kick. This kicks up. Now this kicks back up. Now my spinny spins back up. And now I'm going to fill her with the, I'm going to use my filler with the spinning kick. Oh, but now the fire breath's back up and my keg's back up. Oh man. Literally, you just feel like you are mashing buttons all over the place. Now there's there's a lot of room for error. You don't have, it's not like you have to do a certain exact, just mash them. Literally just, you could probably get away with just literally mashing all of the buttons and whichever one was up would be cast. You really probably could. But at the same time, it leads to a high skill ceiling of actually using them specifically, knowing how to shift that. You have an AoE filler of the spinning crane kick, and you also have a single target filler of Tiger Palm. So there's a lot of buttons at your disposal here. There's a lot, and that's part of the skill at this point, is you need a lot of key bindings. I have a whole key binding video um, that I've done on the channel. I'm going to be coming out with more key binding videos, so stay tuned for that if you want help with that, because I don't have problems with key binding, because I have very efficient key binds, and I actually, I could, I, I could get into that. But key binds aren't a problem for me on the Monk, so I don't feel that too bad. And uh, stagger and all of that, I have weak auras to track the stagger, because the default interface for stagger is not good as far as the game goes. It does not help you manage your stagger well. So you need a weak ore to do that, which I also have videos on weak ores. So the cons for me of the monk are diminished in that way a little bit, but it is a lot of buttons to press and smash. And it really does when I tank, I feel like I'm like playing a piano or something very aggressively all over the place. I also think with the monk, there's some next level plays you can make with this ring of peace thing and moving enemies around the teleport thing where you can move over here and then teleport back to your spot. You have a lot of mobility they have the healing orbs that are around you. You have the pure purifying brews that you're drinking and uh, lots of different stuff to go on with a lot of different options and a lot of buttons to press and a lot of AOE damage. They have huge, crazy AOE damage. I know I'm not really talking about damage in this video, but probably monk will have the best AOE damage throughout the whole time. It's just so baked into their kit and they have so many things that's just going on and spinning around them. And I actually see that as part of the complex offensive tank that I really love about monks. On to the big picture now. Here we go. The big picture of everything. This chart is linked down in the description. Uh, there's a link to my Patreon and it is a free post on my Patreon where I make things like this all the time for my patrons. I have weak auras for my patrons. Each of the each of the classes I just got on and you saw the weak auras that I was actively using. All of those are available to my patrons as a simple download that you can easily just go snag and grab for yourself, import them, customize them, tweak them around, all along with macros and lots of other stuff that I give my patrons to help support and make all of these things possible that I can do what I do. So thank you to you patrons. Um, but you can go pick this chart up over here. Oh, also, let me change this monk self healing. There we go. And that should be on that uh, chart there. But this is the big picture. And what I would say for you is think of what is important to you. When you want to play a tank, what category is the most important for you? Do you really care about having a bunch of defensive cooldowns and your self healing? Or do you even want self healing to be responsible for that? Because if you don't like self healing, you should probably pick one of these tanks because they don't have to really rely on as much self healing themselves. If you just want to use your active mitigation, use your defense of cooldowns and then the healer will take care of you cool paladin would be great for that because you don't even really heal yourself that much and the healer you you def you you basically become immune to so much damage that you might not even need heals so that's a totally different play style than death knight which also still has a lot of defensives but you're going to do a lot of self-healing so maybe demon hunter would be the opposite of paladin where they have a lot of self-healing not so much defensives which for myself to add in a little bit there, I'm personally fine with. I like being in charge of myself and being in control of this. So if I pug in a mythic plus, I don't have to hope that the healer's good. I just know I got myself covered and the hope in the healers, the healer can help out. Another big one is mobility. How important is mobility for you? Because for me, mobility is huge, right? So I was immediately drawn toward Demon Hunter and Monk, right? And then I also, I played Demon Hype, Dem Death Knight for a very long time, but I think the thing that got me away with that is this displacement here. Because you really can think of this this feels like more of a four to me whenever I play a death knight because I can just pull things to me. I don't need to run to it if I just pull it to me, you know, because a lot of times in that situation where you're in a spot, and you got to pull things, you got to go grab those things. If you have a death knight and there's just one or two of them, you just pull it to you and then taunt the other one. 
done and it's super simple so uh th this order actually for the record is my favorite tanks in order this might change later on in dragonfly but this is my current favorite order of tanks from favorite to least favorite down here and paladin i'm sorry but it's just oh, it's it's rough but what's important to you aoe and how much aoe do you have that is important i love aoe i love mobility i'm a mythic plus tank so yes please this is exactly a mythic plus tank for me i'm gonna zip around and grab everything and nuke it all down I don't need to displace it because I can jump to it and my utility, okay, maybe I can trade that off. I'm sorry, guys, I'm not as useful, but hey, uh, here we go. I'll also change gears and show you this chart now, which gets them all color-coded. So you can see where all the fives are, who's got the fives, and actually I should probably change this again here to the the yellow right there, there you go. So the reds are gonna be zeros and ones, about like, whew, they just really are not good at that. It feels very bad for me on a druid to not have that ranged AOE and I have to just run around as this little bear that can't really dash that much because my mobility's not that good. My ranged AOE's not that good. My displacement's not that good. I literally can't play druid for those reasons. And that's why I've chopped off druid myself, personally. Uh, Paladin I've chopped off because the mobility is just absolutely terrible and they have no displacement. So again, I'm in that same kind of spot. But at least with a Paladin, I have the ranged AOE to throw that around. I personally I put Paladins at the very bottom for me because I don't like the holy power spender thing. It feels like rogue combo points. It basically is rogue combo points and I hate the combat combat points combo point system. I just don't like it. So that's why these two are down for me. I really have gone back and forth with Monk and Warrior. I love the mobility of Monk. I will be playing these top three pretty regularly. Warriors feel great now with the new changes from Dragonflight and they really do feel so much like a warrior. So I probably will play them too, just maybe not as much. And uh, I've, I've there's all the reasons I had for the other ones. And now what you might have been waiting for is this total reveal here. And there are the numbers for the totals added together. I had to do it. By no means am I saying that this is like who's better or worse and all that kind of stuff, but I maybe kind of is. And in my opinion, I'm going to be playing these three. I I like the I like what they got going on. I think they offer a lot to the table. And again, this is patches will change and go up and down and stuff, but I think these still ring true to how you play them. What it feels like to play them. It feels bad to play a druid for those reasons I just said it feels bad to play a paladin because they're just missing some things here bad to play a warrior i feel like they're missing some things here who knows but let me know what you think down below on this tank video this is a very different tank video a lot of effort and work has gone into this thank you again to dark mech uh, for helping and collaborate in this way and i hope this truly truly helped you figure out which tank you want to play because i know i spent hours and days and days going back and forth and figuring out which one and i went through this entire journey and i hope that i condensed it into one video to help you through your journey so stay creative think outside the box peace